Greetings fellow painters! Today we take a look at the revolutionary new painting method that is neither new nor revolutionary, but will get you to a dynamically painted miniature in half the time. Welcome to Half Chop, and welcome to Treehane Miniatures. This video will serve as an introduction to Half Chop and is not a Half Chop tutorial proper. We'll get to that in the next video. We're going to talk about the motivation and inspiration that led to the innovation that's about to take the miniature painting world by storm, as well as its advantages and practical applications. I'll discuss the painting method over footage of the miniature I painted that led to the development of the half chop style. I'll also describe the specifics of what I'm doing on this model in case you want to paint along. Warning, you will see airbrush work here, but that is not what half chop is about. The process of painting this miniature inspired the development of Half Chop, but isn't quite a full representation of what that style is. So what is Half Chop? Half Chop is the silly name for the painting method that relies on a dark colored primer that will be used as the foundation for a backlight effect on an entire half of the miniature, as well as all of the shadow color of every part of the model, creating a miniature with a high contrast atmospheric look. The beautiful thing about Half Chop is that it pairs perfectly with other painting styles such as traditional layering techniques, base shade highlight, airbrush, and especially that other silly name style, Slap Chop. In fact, the basis of Half Chop is that half of the miniature is essentially slap chopped with a single color. The best and most universal color for this is a very dark blue, such as Satin Midnight Blue, which works as a primer and shadow color for the entire model. With the miniature all primed with satin midnight blue, I use a medium gray through an airbrush to block in the base color of the robe. I spray from the model's top right and slightly to the front of the model. This is gonna be the direction that I want the main light to be coming from. I then follow that up with a light blue gray covering a little less area. One of the things that I really enjoy about Half Chop is that it essentially forces your hand to create an interesting looking miniature. It avoids one of the easiest pitfalls in miniature painting, which is highlighting everything to the point that none of the highlights actually stand out. It naturally results in a high contrast, dynamically lit model. This atmospheric look is perfect for any game with a dark, moody setting, such as Darkest Dungeon, Massive Darkness, Dark Souls, or any other game with the word dark in the title. In the next several videos, I'm going to use it to paint various minions from Cthulhu Death May Die, and in the future I'll use it to paint some miniatures from Nemesis and Nemesis Lockdown. It can also be used as a starting point for your grim dark miniatures for tabletop games such as Mordheim. For this mage miniature I'm painting here, I use red ink through an airbrush for the foundation of the orange OSL. I spray the red directly from the end of the staff that is the source of the OSL. That way, the red paint hits the same parts of the model that the light would. If you're a return customer, I'm sure you've noticed that I love painting miniatures with dynamic lighting, with half the miniature receiving strong light and the other half in near darkness. And that dark area is where I like to paint some sort of glowing backlight effect. I'm not abandoning that style or that way of painting going forward, but Half Chop is a great way to get a similar result in less time. Continuing with the OSL on this mage character here, I will use my favorite orange OSL color, Clear Orange, with a standard brush to build the OSL effect. I start each stroke within the red area furthest from the light source and finish each stroke at a point where I want the orange to be the brightest. The accidental motivation for this speed painting style comes out of necessity. It's Friday evening and I receive a message from a dear friend asking if I could bring a painted mage to our next gaming session which is Saturday morning. So I have about 90 minutes to prime, paint, and seal the miniature. The mage that I decide to paint comes from the same game as the Moonlit Ogre that I had painted in this video here. Naturally, I want to paint the mage in a similar manner, but I don't have the five or more hours available that it took to paint the ogre miniature. I also know that I want to have an OSL effect from the orb at the end of the mage's staff, which will take a little time. So, how do I paint the miniature, like the Moonlit Ogre, as quickly as possible so that I still have enough time to work on the OSL that I want to incorporate? The first shortcut I choose is to grab a rattle can of midnight blue paint and primer in one, since I know I'm going to leave half the miniature blue and highlight it later with titanium white and a blue glaze. By the way, the inspiration for the Moonlit Ogre came from Squidmar Miniatures' Paint Like a Legend video, which I'll link here, where Luca paints a beautiful display quality miniature half in shadow. Uh, the miniature's in shadow, not Luca, just to be clear. 
The next inspiration I took was from Marco Fersoni, who had a video where he speed painted, air quotes around speed painted, a miniature in eight hours with an airbrush. Now he does extremely high quality display level miniature painting. And while eight hours may not seem like speed painting to you and me, the takeaway here is that an airbrush speeds up the painting process. So I decide to use one here on this mini, but don't run away. Once I decide that half chop is going to be its own style, I move away from the airbrush. In the very next video, we're going to dive right in with a full slap chop, half chop tutorial, no airbrush. You'll want to subscribe now so you don't miss it. On the mage here, I'm taking a break from the OSL to paint the skin. I use dark flesh to color the face and hands now because these areas are also going to receive some of the OSL. Next up, I will use titanium white to paint in all of the highlights that will receive a dark blue glaze. You can easily save some time here by applying a white dry brush, which I'll demonstrate in my next video. And saving time is really the key if you choose to adopt this method of painting. Regardless of your chosen painting style, whether you're going for full slap chop or display level piece, you're going to save time. On projects where you're going for a high level finish, you'll be able to spend more time on the parts of the model that really matter. You're essentially spending your valuable time and energy on the most important half of the model. Continuing with the OSL on this model, I add some Moon Dust by Army Painter to the clear orange and continue building up the OSL. This mix is thinned with water and I start each stroke near each outer edge of the previously placed orange layer. I draw the stroke to the center of where I want this yellow highlight to be. This should result in a fairly smooth blend between the orange and yellow. The wizard staff and belt will each get a layer of fur brown, as well as some OSL touches and his beard will be highlighted with some ash gray by the army painter. The orb at the top of the wizard staff is painted pretty quickly with clear orange, moon dust, and some water. I start at the base of the orb with clear orange where I want it to appear darkest. Then I wet blend in some moon dust as I move higher up on the orb. Finally, I use water and a clean brush to remove paint where I want the glow to be brightest. The last step of the process that will sell that moonlight glow is to take a dark blue thin to a glazed consistency and apply it over all of the titanium white highlights. This step can also be easily accomplished with a dark blue speed paint, such as Beowulf Blue. If you've made it this far, I would like to thank you for joining me on this journey into Half Chop. Please subscribe to the channel as we will continue to explore other potential applications for this style.